going on with you, man? I'm good, bro. How are you? Doing well. I'm doing well. Good. good to hear. I enjoyed uh, season two, man. It was, uh, yeah, it was entertaining. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, definitely entertaining. Definitely. Okay. In, in in there, you did a task. I mean, it was, there was you, you did a task for a uh, Christian. You know, of mm-hmm. course, you were. You know, your whole character was in in what was the process of uh, doing. Um, uh, probation or community mm-hmm. service, right? Community service for, um, for Christian. And of course that was a task you did. Is there any yeah. task in your life or any task that you're probably going through right now that you would probably, that you would like to hand off to someone else and have them do for you? <laughs> you're trying to get me in trouble, Charles. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course, of course. I think we all would. Um. Uh, yeah. I'm. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna leave it there. Yeah. Of course. I would love. I would. I would love that. Yes. Yeah. How many yeah. tasks? How many tasks are you juggling right now? Would you say? How many? I think adulthood is just about spinning plates, isn't it? It's like how many can you spin at the same time, and making sure that you you're watching all of them and making sure that they're all spinning collectively. So um, I think even for myself, just like everybody else, we're always, we're always spinning plates. You had several plates spinning in second series too. I mean, you were, of course you had your new, your new entrepreneurial uh, mm-hmm. adventure going. You yeah. had, had uh, a new, um, I won't want to, don't want to give the whole thing away, but you know, you, you have a new addition to your, your life and your, your situation period. And also you're being the guardian for your parent, for your, for your sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're still doing the community service on top of wanting to move forward on certain goals and dreams and ambitions that you, that you, that you had. So, did, were you even aware that you was, did you even think of it, <clears throat> excuse me, from that area where you were just like, there were so many plates spinning even in the series that you had? Yeah, but um, I had a, a good way of just like compartmentalizing. You know, I think uh, with with these things, especially like in season two, it's just like a fallout of, of season one. So, you know, all of these things sort of rumbled just underneath and season two, just everything just comes to the to the surface. And for him, you know, the stakes are really made apparent when uh, they put the bag over his head and, you know, he, he, he nearly suffocates. That's when he realizes how real the stakes can get for him. And, um, you know, that's when he really has to decide what is he going to do with himself? And not only just that, who can he take with him? You know, when he decides, if he decides to go or whatever he decides to do, you know, that's what's so good about season two as well for him is that it's a discovery of himself and it allows him to be selfish in a way. You know, he can kind of make decisions about him for him. You know, season one, it's just, it was always about somebody else. You know, like you said, he's doing community service for somebody else so that he can put shelter over somebody else and he's also looking after somebody else so season two he kind of gets to become selfish in a way and starts to really question what does he want from life you know when you when you're an older sibling sometimes you know you're you you're forced to grow up faster so you're able to take care of those that come after you and you have to set that example and for him he wanted to make sure that you know, not only was she better than him, but she had more opportunities and she was able to explore the world in its entirety. That's what he was trying to set her up for. Obviously, she was getting caught up in, you know, the lifestyle and the environment that they lived in. But his dream was always to take her out of that. So for him now going into season two, with everything that goes on, he then starts to think about, OK, if I could in an ideal world, what would I do? And 
that dream is sparked by Ronnie, you know, which is then why the reason why he wants to take her with him. Yeah, Ronnie, um, Ronnie kind of stepped up, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> you know, she went from the humble, sweet little kleptomaniac to, as you said, the second series really comes out, you know, it's full detail. And I believe Ronnie steps up and to her true potential. And if you add, if you add in the aspect of her character and, um, you know, the business mind and, you know, just getting the way of how everything worked from the new venture, she, she dove right in it with you on her side. I mean, it, it went, and with the team that you had, isn't it usually how it goes where if, you know, you've got the right business mind, you got the right partner and definitely have the right team that you can definitely, you, you will be successful in whatever you do, as long as you all work together. Um, is that would be a perfect example of what season two displays. You agree? Yeah, I fully agree. I, I fully agree with that. I think everybody sort of knew that they had to, a different position to play and they knew you know, where their strengths were and where their weaknesses were. You know, you see uh, a great scene between um, uh, Myrna and John where uh, they're trying to figure out how to sort of do something. I don't want to give it away, right. but, um, you know, it just explores the strengths and weaknesses of of the outlaws and us needing each other even more to uh, make this thing work. I think we all knew that we had a, a vital, a vital, vital, uh, situation and a volatile one that we had to rectify as soon as possible and Rani was the one that stepped up and said that she was gonna gonna lead and obviously as the person that's closest to her out of the rest of the outlaws it was my job to make sure I had her back you know as somebody who was more familiar with the street life than anybody else would you say that the characters or the people that you're around in life maybe from a business aspect um, or purposeful aspect, you know, such as maybe community service, they can impact you to change the way you look at or have a different perspective of your personal life because each character made a change and of course that would happen. Each character made a change in their personal life in certain ways and different views and perspectives, even your character. What would you say yeah. about that? Would it was yeah, it no. because, I'm sorry, was it because of who you uh were were meeting with and 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 dealing with from the other people and what you learned new aspects of life and you know, was that Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, there's a great conversation that uh that my character has with Ronnie where he says that he was he's speaking to uh, John about like mortgages and mortgage structures and, and stuff like that and uh, I, I completely agree like the people that you're around their energy and their drive is going to rub off on you 100% you know it's that age old saying you know you, you spend your time with six successful people you become the seventh you know if you spend your time with six criminals you'll become the seventh um, and uh you know, in, in that way, it, it works for both sides, for him. And because initially he wasn't a criminal. He was the only one that hadn't committed a crime. He committed a crime when he decided to do community service for somebody else. Um, and then obviously stealing the bag and, and, and how that story has unfolded. But before that, you know, initially he was the only one that hadn't done anything. And um, yeah, so I fully, I fully, fully agree with what you're saying. You know, it's, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's actually one of the things that I had thought about, too. Uh, I was like, man, you know, your character was the only one that didn't commit the crime, you know, to be in there. And But eventually, the irony of you not committing a crime caused you committing a crime, and it, it yeah. kind of spiraled from there. Um, yeah. You know, there's some people that would say that you know, you mentioned criminals and business people, right? Mm -hmm. You, 
that's what the outlaws were actually about. You know, you, you had a lot of different business ventures, uh, you know, from nonprofits to entertainment, to industrial, to entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. to uh, legal, you know, you had all these different successful business people, but also labeled as criminals. Mm -hmm. um, are, it, it, I don't know if I want to add, I'll ask anyway, this is me. Is it, could it be that, Never mind. let me move. It, it was just funny that you asked that, that you mentioned that because, you know, you kind of had both in, in the setting. You, you think, you know, you had criminals and businessmen. Would you say it was more criminals or more businessmen? I, I think that there's just nuance in everyone. And, and like, you know, with, with that story, I think Stephen wanted to explore that and show that you can be labeled a criminal regardless of your status in life. That's what's so beautiful about the story. You see people where, you know, if you see my character walking down the street and you see uh, a different character, one of the outlaws walking down the street and somebody was to say, you know, point at who the criminal was, nine times out of 10, they would probably pick my character. And that was the point is, is for you to rethink your stereotypes and rethink what you think somebody else is just because of how they dress or their profession or where they live or all of those things, you know, under the right circumstances, you know, people will do what they have to do. You know, now that you mentioned there was some stereotyping going on in there as well, especially <laughs> for you. Now that you mentioned, I never, and honestly, I never even really looked at it from that angle. Uh, but let's speak of the stereotyping. Why do you think, let's kind of change the direction real quick. Why do you think that a lot of British actors get pushed back from um, when you all come to America and take roles or do care, you know, play roles in, in American movies, you know, such as um, Daniel um, Kal Kaluuya, Kaluuya yeah. uh, um, Fred Hampton, and mm -hmm. Cynthia Arrivo. Arrivo, yeah. Um, and then I'm sure you're going to be coming across the pond real soon and, and playing some roles. Uh, yep, I will. Uh, why is it that you think British actors get the pushback for coming across the pond and, and playing these American roles? It's hard because I, I think for me, on this, I don't think the pushback's as big as it seems to be. Um, you know, I, I feel like there's a lot of love. Like when I, when shows especially like people come over and they're, and they're really good and they're talented i feel like they get the love and they and they get supported i, I see the support that they give uh like a show like snowfall like i, I love that show and damson idris is the lead of that and i think he's an incredible actor and i'm i, I don't really see as much pushback yes there is going to be people that are questioning it but i just think it's just a case of like unfamiliarity if anything you know, you know, people feel what they don't know. And, you know, people probably just assume that because we come from the UK, we just have like, we're just out of touch with anything that goes on outside of the UK, which is totally not the case. You know, our, our culture is built on so many different cultures, you know. Um, so, you know, we're fully aware of, you know, like when you talk about Daniel, you know, when he's playing Fred Hampton, I think he did a phenomenal job. And I, I just think he's such a talented actor and it shouldn't be about necessarily, okay, you're British, you should only do British roles or when you're American, you should only do American roles. It should be who's good enough to do the role, who can portray the role as honest as they can, who can really resonate with the story and, you know, let that be the, the catalyst for that person to get the job. But even for myself, like, you know, I, like you said, I, I'm definitely going to go go overseas and, and work because you guys tell great stories too, you know, and I would love to be a part of, you know, those those great stories that you guys tell. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that as actors. It's our job to make sure that we can fit as many different molds as possible. So we shouldn't really be boxed in and, uh, into any market, into just the British market or any market we should be able to as creators, as artists, this is our job. This is what we do. <clears throat> How hard is it to, uh, is it difficult? 
I should say, to have an American accent because Idris Elba came over here. It was a long time. Nobody even knew that he was from across mm. from from Europe, from across the overseas. So, and his accent was, you know, he, it was dead on pretty much. So, is it difficult for you all for you know with your accent to come over here and imitate the American accent? No, not really. I, I mean, like coming in really quickly. Sorry about that. We have time. We have to wrap shortly after this one. All right. No problem. Um, no, for me, no, not at all. I mean, we grew up listening to American music, watching American TV shows. So, you know, that that is it's already been there. You know, the American industry creatively is huge. So for us, it's, it's something we always look to, you know, seeing, like, for myself, seeing, like, loads of Black people on screen, probably the first time I got to see that was probably an American show. So you're always going to, attach yourself to something like that so yeah for 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 us like or for myself i speak for myself no it's not it's not really uh it's not really that difficult right well man you know of course our time is up man but uh it was great yeah. talking with you man i appreciate the time and when you come across the way man make sure you link up we'll, we'll have to sit down and, and talk some more definitely charles man i appreciate you man all right man enjoy the rest of your week man take care right. Thanks, take care bro